everyone, how are you doing? Welcome back to Franz K's Mouthpiece. And as promised, I have a video today and we're going to talk about a very deep topic. Oh boy, let's get ready. It's going to be so much. Anyway, Happy New Year to everyone. We're now in 2023. This is a new month for the end of January. I think today is January the 29th to be exact. It's Sunday. Happy Sunday, guys. When you're watching it, it won't be Sunday. But yes, before we continue with this video, please click the link. Subscribe to my channel um, for more videos. Uh, like as well. Comment and share. Share with your friends, with your family. Let them know this is going to be a deep topic. We are talking about anxiety and how to deal with it. How do I deal with it? What does the Bible say about dealing with it? How you should deal with it? You know, some helpful tips to deal with it. So, yes, I want to start off by giving a definition of anxiety. So people have a kind of a clear understanding of what it is. So let me just take my notes here. It says, anxiety is a feeling of worry, nervousness or unease about something with an uncertain outcome. So usually most people get anxiety over a certain situation. It just, um, it's not something like you wake up with like depressed, you're just depressed. No, it's, you can get depressed because of anxiety, but usually people are worrying about a situation, how to handle it, or, you know, worrying about the outcome. Like, you know, we get anxiety, we get nervousness over exams, right? And that's normal. We Anxiety, most people um, have had a bit of anxiety in their life. You're going to take a plane, you're worried, you know, you hope you land safe. You're going to do an exam, so you hope you do well on that exam. So... That's just generally the brief explanation of anxiety. So before we get into this, I'd just like to say a quick prayer, you know, so that the Holy Spirit just flows through me when I'm talking. So Heavenly Father, as I come before you, dear God, we just give you praise, glory, and honor. You are amazing, God. We worship at your feet. We ask, dear Heavenly Father, that you use me as a vessel. Cleanse me, dear God. Whatever comes out my mouth, let it be, you know, of you, dear God. Let your words flow through me, dear God. Let it not be from me, dear God, but from you. Guide me, teach me, dear God. And help me, dear God, to reach others in your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So let's get down to it. So I'm going to give you a brief um, background story of why I decided to talk about anxiety. So as I said, everyone normally suffers from a little bit of anxiety in life. But usually we get over it. The exam is that we've done. It's finished. It's over with. The anxiety of that exam has passed. We land safely. We thank the Lord. The anxiety of that plane ride is over with, right? And usually it's a short period. It doesn't like really affect you or it's never really affected me. To be honest, I've never really been an anxious person that much. I've got nervousness over exams, nervousness over interview, nervousness over taking a plane. But it's never worried me so much where I've had sleepless nights, where I've been irritable, where, you know, I'm constantly thinking about the situation where I've had like, you know, heart rate changes, whatever. Until recently, where something happened to me and it threw me for a loop. And I was literally suffering with all the things that I just mentioned couldn't sleep when i would be sleeping i would be thinking about the issue i would have like um a little bit of a fast heartbeat sometimes thinking about the situation you know i would be grumpy moody i just wanted to sleep all day i didn't want to interact with people i was just nervous every time i thought about the situation i felt like i wanted to throw up and i was like I really have a problem here like this is not usually me usually i'm like i'll just leave it up to god whatever god wants to do god do your thing but i wasn't doing that i wasn't just saying you know i'm just gonna chill lay back god do your thing no i was really worried about the situation like i was taking everything on top of my head on top of my shoulders everything like it was just all on top of me to the point that i had to you know, at work, we have this hotline or whatever, um, because I work in the healthcare profession. 
so the job is very stressful so they've provided um psychiatrists or like a helpline where you can go and talk to people when you're stressed or whatever so um i told my manager um, because i was off at sick leave so basically the situation was i had an injury that was caused by a broken window at work this injury then um, put me into a position where I couldn't do my job that was required of me. I couldn't do all the role and aspects because my hand would like get swollen. I would have pain. I would have stiffness and I couldn't um, do all the long hours. I couldn't do what was needed of me. The rep I couldn't do the repetitive stuff. I still can't do some of it now. So as for that i was off sick leave until they could find me a role that would best fit um my situation my disability i'm not going to say i'm disabled but at the present time it was it's still a disability until until i could have returned back into work in my full capacity now there were months when i was without work i was getting paid yes but months where i wasn't getting like um i wasn't in work and according to the sick pay i think you can get six months full pay and then after that is half pay so you know the months were like stacking up where it was coming up to six months and my manager said look we need to find you something soon or you you know you might get half pay or this is a situation like you know i was being called into work to be um to be um to discuss about my um sickness have i gone to the doctors what have i done have i what well, i'm taking medications what can i manage what i cannot manage and so it was getting on top of me like one i'm at home for a very long time two you're then trying to force me to come into work to do a job that um it's like because before that i'd been redeployed to two other sites and that was just so stressful having to relearn everything over relearn something new and then they were trying to redeploy me to somewhere else, which I didn't really want to go to because I didn't really like that type of descript type of place or whatever. Not like I hated the job. I just didn't really, I wasn't fond of it. And my hand was still causing me pain, still causing me trouble. So it's like, and then you're telling me if I don't return back to work, I have no option that I could lose money, that my bills won't be paid. So like everything came on top of me. I'm like, it's not my fault that my hand is injured i didn't you know the broken window i didn't break it you guys didn't put a sign on the window so why is it my fault then you're kind of like pushing me to come back to work which i kind of do need because i need my bills to be paid but you're pushing me into something that i don't necessarily want to do i want to go back to my old role i want to do something i'm comfortable you're trying to push me up my comfort zone that's another thing that's that you know that's god right there sometimes you know he's pushing me out my comfort zone right that's that's a word from god and so everything was just coming on top of me and i was just at home by myself just so stressed just like watching youtube all the time and that's why the anxiety levels went up and worse because what i should have been doing was i should have been using that time to be spending it in the lord so basically it got so bad my anxiety level i literally told my manager and he said okay call this hotline and you know me i am even though i'm in the healthcare profession and i understand about mental health and i understand how um it all works holistically like your mental health can, health can affect your physical and your physical can affect your mental and your spiritual and your emotional all of these tie in together right so me i know it's important to have a good mental health but like whenever someone says oh i'm suffering from depression i'm suffering sometimes i just chalk it up like oh like come on why are you so sad about you you can pay your bills and everything i sometimes used to be that person because i never really suffered that much from i've never suffered from depression i've never suffered from my actual mental health you know some people are diagnosed with like schizophrenia bipolar I, i've never been diagnosed with that i don't believe i have that in jesus name and you know ap apart from the occasional heartbreak from a guy or maybe not getting something that you've desired from i've been able to bounce back from those you know with the aid of god but this one i was just like i don't know why i was finding it so hard and because you know i've never had this situation where i've had to worry about money so much because usually i would live with parents so i wouldn't have to worry but now i'm living on my own 
my parents i don't want to be going to them for money i'm a grown woman i should be able to care for myself like i trusted in the lord at the end of the day that he was going to provide no matter what but it still wasn't enough like i was still stressing and i literally took the number called the lady and i spoke to someone on the phone for a good how many hours it was a good venting process i'm not gonna lie i wouldn't like say no to therapy but i feel like therapy needs to coincide with something else but we'll get into that in a moment but it was a good purging session i just told her everything she was a good listener she didn't criticize me she didn't judge me and i had that one session and i felt light for a bit but then the problem came back again so it didn't just stop there it came back and it came 10 times worse and I was like, but I just had this talk, you know, she was so encouraging. And then she, and then it was this whole situation of, okay, um, I can't remember who said it or what the situation was, but then I was referred to the psychologist at work because I said, look, I can't sleep. You know, my heart is beating. Sometimes I feel nauseous, everything. I was like, so worried. So they was like, okay, we'll refer you. I sent this email. But then when the email came back and he assessed me, so I was assessed. Then they was like, yeah, call this number. This is this reference. You need to call this number. You need to book it. And it, to me, it was like, oh my God, more. You're giving me more work to do. I'm already like anxious. Now you're telling me I have to call these people. I have to give them this number. I have to sit down, you know, like I had so much things going on. Like so many doctor's appointments. I'm going so much times I'm sitting on the phone waiting to get through to doctors because this is the NHS. Trying to get appointments, trying to book, being saying you have to wait this month, that month and then it's just like more on top of more like another appointment and so I got easily frustrated with that and then I don't know what it was I don't know what it was I just started looking about faith like in the bible and faith on um not faith sorry anxiety and I started looking into that in youtube and I just started hearing messages like you know, when you are overwhelmed, you need to seek the Lord. You need to soak yourself in the presence of the Lord. You need to surround yourself with God's word. You need to surround yourself with God's music. Like all of these things, like, you know, I was just listening and hearing this. So I said, you know what, Francine, to be honest, like what I used to do to get over the anxiety, but it only made it worse was I was just sitting down and watching YouTube videos. I would watch like funny movies, like I would try to find the most comedic movie to just feel happy and to just get over the sadness that was happening. Like, because me, I've always worked. So I was just so sad that I wasn't working. I wasn't doing anything. I was like, God, like, why am I in this situation? So I would just watch movies. And, it, you know, it helped for a bit, for a bit, but it didn't take away the problem. The problem just returned back. I was only happy for a short time. And then it was like when God said, you know, when like the messages, when I looked on YouTube as well and I looked up about um, anxiety and then God was revealing me through the Holy Spirit and like listening to pastors and people saying, soak yourself in the word, soak yourself in the Holy Spirit, soak yourself in his music. And then I started doing that. And I told you one day I just sat down and just spent time with God. And what I did was I just put his his music. Because, you know, um, music has healing power. It says that, like, music helps people, like, in pain. It helps people, like, with dementia. It helps, like, us. It improves our mood. It changes us from being irritable to be happy. So when when I thought about that, that I was like, okay, let me listen to some gospel music. So what I did one day, I just sat down and just played gospel music. I sat down, closed my eyes, you know, prayed, just was literally meditating on God's word. That just his word, his music, like his gospel music and his word. I would just pray um play um was it um like I'd listen to like a Bible verse or whatever? Like um I have a app called the Holy Bible app, 
and basically if you type in like anxiety on it it gives you bible verses it gives you phrase it talks about it and it like gives you encouraging words so like if i'd go for a run if i'd go for a walk if i'm just sitting in my house doing the chores i would just play it. and so the, the the words would just soak into my spirit soak into my mind and it would just give me some positive like thoughts like i would just be at peace not my peace that i would get from doing something like shopping like, you know, one way I would distract myself, like I would go shopping to make me feel happy or I'd like book a trip, you know, abroad. No, the peace of God would just literally surround me and lift me up and just release the burden off of me. So I want to share a few um, scriptures with you. Um, some of the things that has helped me and continue to help me, because, you know, whenever I get that little twinge, because my situation ha still hasn't solved. I'm still not off. I'm still um, not back into my position. I'm still re redeploy. I still get hand pain. You know, I have to still be doing physio exercises, going to all these uh, doctor's appointments, still struggling to get doctor's appointments. And um, when I get like overwhelmed, um, stressed out, I just literally go into the Bible. I just said, it's time to spend time with God. And another thing that um, I did as well was like, I shut down social media for a bit. So that day I just spent in God's presence and I, you know, turned off social media, um, alienate yourself from the world, the world, like the news and anything that um, people tell you, because it can be depressing because the world, we know it. We're living in some serious times in the last times. You're going to hear about murder, death. We live in some sad times and every time, sometimes you turn on to the news is something bad. So the best thing is don't listen to that and just be in the presence of the Lord. So let me just bring up some scriptures. So first Peter five, seven says, cast all your anxiety on him. On him means God because he cares for you. Isn't that such a sweet phrase to know that there's someone out there that actually cares for us? Even if we don't care for our own self, even if we're not kind or loving to our own self, there's a God out there that actually cares for us. Psalms 94, 19. When anxiety was great within me, your consolation brought me joy. Isn't that sweet? When anxiety was within me, literally, God's consolation brought me joy, brought me happiness. Literally, it's nothing sweeter than that. So, as I was saying from Psalm 94, 19, sorry, I had to do something. But when anxiety was great within me, your consolation brought me joy. That means the comfort of God brought me joy. Literally, it did. Because trust me, that anxiety, I never felt like that ever in my life. I thought I was going crazy. Ecclesiastes 11 verses 10. So then banish anxiety from your heart and cast off your troubles off your body for youth and vigor are meaningless. That means saying don't worry, don't stress, you know these are small things in life banish anxiety from your heart this is what the bible is saying banish anxiety I th um another one philippians 6 7 do not be anxious about anything but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your requests be made to god do not be anxious about anything this one it hit me hard in everything by prayer and supplication that was that that's something i wasn't doing at the time and that's why my anxiety grew and when i started praying you know and started praising him because it says and supplication with thanksgiving let your request be made to do to god praise him you know do some serious praise and worship in your house have that gospel music blaring even when you don't feel it start screaming screaming out gyra you you are enough that song spoke to me literally as well it brought back to me because it uh, says it there gyra you're more than enough 
and i will be content in every circumstance no matter the situation is going on i think we just need to just breathe and leave it to god just release it off of you and give it to god let god that's another thing as well let god fight your battles it's not for you to fight it's not for you to fight i think once you realize that the battle is not for you to fight and it's actually god's battle that's one major thing that helped me in my anxiety i said god this is not my battle to fight this is your battle why am i stressing myself when you said you would fight my battles why am i like getting all worked up about what work is doing or what's happening with this this situation with the hand because i'm literally going to court about it because obviously it's a workplace injury that could have been avoided i'm like why am i getting worked up why am i worrying about what is happening you are the one who's supposed to fight for me so when i got to that conclusion i just gave it up to the lord and you know i had f and it's having faith as well just having the tiniest bit of faith that he's going to come through no matter what that everything is going to work out for the good of the lord so whatever situation you are in you need to realize it's going to work out for the good of the lord he's going to bring you out of that situation and he's going to use that situation to bless you because for example that situation allowed me to open this youtube channel I was stuck at home for how many days, bored out my mind watching YouTube videos. And God is like, you're sitting down watching these people when you, other people could be sitting down watching you. Why don't you create content so people can watch you? You're watching people's lives when you could be creating something for other people to watch, to encourage them. So, you know, even though I was stuck at home, I wasn't getting the money that I used to because I couldn't do overtime. I couldn't do night shift. Guess what? God used that situation because I was screaming for years upon years. God, I want to go back into my creative field. God, I want to, you know, create stuff. I want to write stuff. I want to do TV, this TV shows, film, television, because that's what my first degree I, I actually studied for. And God is like, but you're at home not doing anything. You know, even though your hand hurts, I'm sure you just putting on the phone and press record and using your mouth is not going to damage your hand yes the editing was difficult but literally god is like you can edit it slowly you know there's no rush as long as you know you you edit it and get it out there and so i just want to say do not be anxious about anything but in everything prayer pray even if you have to pray 50 times pray god is going to hear you and he's going to help you out the situation the best thing you have to do is not take the fight upon yourself not fight you know not take everything on yourself and just let it go sometimes it's hard for us as humans to let go and he says and the peace of god which transcends all this is still philippians 4 verses 6 to 7 and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. That's it. The peace of all. Once I gave my fight and battle over to Jesus, the peace fell upon me. And another thing, I prayed for the peace of Lord to surround me. Once you have the peace of God within you, and you carry it with you every day, little things don't worry you because you're like, but God, you deal with it. I have the joy of the Lord, so I'm not going to let this work me. And I still have to think about it each and every day. But trust me, the peace of God is so beautiful. And I encourage you guys, if you're struggling with um, some issue, you're having some mental you know, breakdown, because that's what I was having at that point. It was, it literally felt like that. You know, just quiet yourself from the world. You know, um... If you need to take yourself off YouTube, take yourself off social media, Instagram, TikTok for a bit, play some gospel music in the background, start crying out to God, start praying to God, you know, praying for peace, praying to get over your anxiety, you know, praying that you have faith so you can let go of the situation and trust in the Lord. Read upon passages about faith, read about passages on peace, you know, because at the end of the day, you're not the only one who's been through this. Everyone in the Bible have been through, you know, anxiety. 
so much the some of the famous people that were anxious in the bible were job and moses moses had a stammer and you know he had a great task in front of him and you know he literally fled egypt in the beginning because he killed someone so to have to go back there now and he wasn't even really close with the jewish people because he grew up in the um pharaoh's palace so to go back there and lead people he didn't really know he didn't grow up with and also they had um you know i don't know if they had seen him i think one or two people had seen him as a murderer because um some people caught him doing that so and also to have a st stammer to go there that's why he prayed to god and asked god to you know say god i would do this if you send someone else to do it with me and god sent i think it was aaron moses is mouthpiece because moses you know would stammer and stuff like that so literally he was an anxious person about the situation but god like was with him he had faith he was obedient to god that's how you know he had faith because he was obedient he stepped out and did it you know he stepped out and did what god asked him to do and he had to had a bit of faith in order to do that he had to have some the same with job as well he must have been a nervous wreck job lost his family his kids his house his wealth he had boils all over him his friends were telling him to curse God. His wife was telling him to curse God. His friends were blaming him for the reason why he was in that situation. Was like, yeah, you did something. And actually, he really didn't. And he had, you know, even though he was angry. I wouldn't say angry, but annoyed with God. Like, questioning him, like, why? Um, He had faith because he never cursed God you know he said that um he did question god but he never cursed him he never was like dismissed god or whatever so he even being anxious he got who got blessings in the end both of them moses and job they got over their situation when they were both nervous they overcame it that's the thing these people who were nervous in the bible eventually all overcame the situation it wasn't easy but they overcame it this situation that i'm going through at work it will i will overcome it i will just like i've overcome exams just like i've overcome flying you know on a plane just like i've overcome so many things in life that i was anxious about at that time i shall overcome this god does not give us something that we can handle so I believe whatever situation you're going through in life, I'm not talking about me. This is to uplift you guys to know that whatever situation you're going through in life, you will overcome it. You will overcome. It will be hard for a bit, but you will overcome it. But the main thing is do not worry about the situation. I'm telling you guys, do not put this situation on your head. Do not stress about it. Do not have sleepless nights. To me, the best way to handle it is to give it over to God. Once you say, God, here, here, God, this is your problem. This is your situation now. I leave you to handle it. I leave you to fight the battle. You are the captain of my army. Once you start saying prayers like that, God's going to roll through. I mean, like, I got this baby girl. Come, let's go. Like, because you have literally have faith in god you're saying god you are my protector god i am content with what is happening i'm content with how you're handling this i'm content with you being the leader over my life i'm content with your will over my life i understand that i'm through this situation but i'm i'm you know i'm trusting in you i want to have your peace once you start saying god give me your peace god give me it trust me things will change and I know some people say, well, I don't need that because I exercise. Or, well, I don't need that because I go shopping. Those things can help with anxiety, as I said, therapy as well. But I think it doesn't really 100% solve the problem. Because what these things do is distract you. And they can help lighten your mood, but only for a short time. As I said, I watched YouTube and I would watch comedies and I would laugh. And it would lighten my mood only for a short time, but I would wake up the next day with the problem. 
and to me i know the only person that can solve my problem is god the only person and I, at the moment god is working on it trust me he's working on my problem i've already seen like um certain signs certain situations certain things have been done so i know he's working on it but the thing is like what if you can't run physically what if you're in a wheelchair what if you're a bedridden what if you know suddenly it's cold outside it's snowing outside but you're still suffering with this situation then you can't distract yourself by running what if you don't have money to go shopping like that happened to me like at the moment i really would love to go on a holiday to distract myself from all of this work and everything but i don't have the money like i used to before so at this moment i have to really be content in god's peace and be content in what is going on in my life and understand that you know it's not going to be easy but god is going to make a way so i don't want to keep talking but basically that's what i want to sum up like we can do all these things but i think all these things is going to distract us and the best way to like you know get in a right mental free is listening to god's word spending time in god's presence the holy spirit is the comforter god said he's going to leave. even though he leaves this world this world he will give us his comforter which is the holy spirit and sometimes i feel when i'm in god's presence i feel like i'm being hugged by him like literally that's how it really is he will give you all he will give you peace joy and understanding understanding about your situation because you know he's in he showed me why i'm in this situation he's like you were getting too comfortable at your job and i want you to move out of comfort zone i want you to do other things in this life i want you to do greater things so that's kind of giving me a peace of mind understanding things so i just pray for you everyone who's watching this video that when you leave that the p the joy the peace the joy of the lord will consume you that everyone um will be visited by the holy spirit and you'll be comforted and whatever situation that you're going through that god will alleviate you and remove that problem for your life and that you know you will be relieved that a burden will be released off of you and that anxiousness will not be in your vocabulary that worry and stress and fear will never be in your vocabulary but the joy and peace of the lord shall be in your vocabulary but the love i know that you know he cares for us and he wants us happy and but whatever situation we are in that it will work out for the good of us we just pray over everyone who's watching this video and may god give you comfort in whatever situation you're facing, may your mind be at ease. May his peace forever fall upon you. And we just give you all the praise and all the honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Anyway, guys, I'm going to end this video. Do you like my new hairstyle? <laughs> Let me stop. But yes, um, I'm going to do more videos i really want to do a video like i want to do several videos so i want to do a video on um marriages the importance of marriage <laughs> and i want to do a video called let's talk about sex but yes i hope you enjoyed this video please as i said subscribe like comment and share share because i feel like a lot of people especially with the living crisis that we're in with you know gas has gone up oil has gone up food prices have gone up um so much things are go is happening i think that you know anxiety levels are gonna go up a lot of kids are like you know depressed a lot of kids are having you know thoughts that are not good and eventually harming themselves so more so than when it was my time my time i hardly heard of people you know having suicidal thoughts but nowadays you just hear so many kids having it and so many adults as well so i think you know there's so much in life and life is hard so if you can share it with someone hopefully this will you know benefit someone all right remember god loves you have a nice day bye